In this video, I'd like to take you through some of my thoughts on some excerpts from Till Eulenspiegel's Merry Pranks. There are a couple of excerpts that show up on a lot of different audition lists, and it's a really fun excerpt to play, but it can be kind of tricky. So let's go through some of the musical elements and some of the stylistic things that we'll need to include to make these excerpts really shine. So as we look at this excerpt from the first trumpet part, this is the big climactic moment at the end of the piece. There's a lot of forte dynamics, a lot of accents. So we know that this is gonna be quite aggressive in color. And when you listen to it, it's incredibly active, like the whole orchestra is playing and it's just loud and exciting and bombastic. However, the excerpt doesn't start that way. You can see the beginning is pianissimo and we have some staccato notes here. So when I try to approach this, I try to get these staccatos to be very, very crisp and make sure that they're right in time, that we're not late off the tie. You wanna continue that going into 34, continue that past 34, and really this whole entire thing is building to 35. After that, we have a couple of measures of rest. Here, there's three measures of rest. I would count this, it's not that long. And then we wanna make sure that we've practiced things like long tones and other types of arpeggios where we have nailed a B flat. This part's an F, so this is gonna be a B flat. We've nailed that note over and over and over again, so we have lots of confidence and then we have seven measures of rest. Again, I would just count all of this. It's not that long. And then at 36, the same thing as before, we're gonna try to get a really, really crisp and clean high C run down to this G right here. This is three Fs. This is one of the loudest parts, so it's totally okay to try to rip it if you want. After that, uh, three after 36, it backs off just a little bit. We wanna keep the energy high though, so I mostly think about just keeping the articulation as crisp as I possibly can. Really lean into these accents going into this dotted half note fortissimo. And then the character right here actually changes. I almost think about it as you wanna back off a whole dynamic and keep it as light as possible on these eighth notes. Now I'm not gonna take a crack at trying to pronounce these German words on the page. I have no idea how to say them, but I can use Google Translate to find out that those words translate to always exuberant and lively, which is gonna give you as much of a clue of what the character of this section is gonna be. Now, when we get to 37 here, we have a number of notes that are accented, a number of notes that aren't accented, and a number of notes that are accented. When I play this, I try to think about them as terraced dynamics. So maybe I'm thinking really fortissimo, aggressive accented notes for the first, I guess, six notes there. And then the ones that aren't accented, I'm actually thinking just a dynamic down if I can, and then bring it back up for the accented notes. And then the same thing that follows on this long, extended finger twister of a phrase. This final push right here, about eight measures before 38, it changes from a very aggressive character that's really crisp to more of a song, more of singing out as loud and as boisterously as you can, but we wanna try to retain as much beauty as we can in the sound while still keeping it electric and exciting. The next excerpt we're gonna look at comes from the third trumpet part. Strauss often writes these really great third trumpet parts that have some independent lines from the first and the second part. This is one of those places where the first and the second trumpet are resting and the third trumpet has this soft exposed line that is with the English horn 
and the third horn. We need to make sure even though it's soft, it's nice and secure. So you can see it says pianissimo and you have these accents. So you're trying to balance, how do I play this soft with a very firm articulation that clearly outlines the rhythm. At the beginning of the excerpt, you can see these two different German phrases that give us an indication of the character. The one on the top translates to a little more leisurely and the one on the bottom translates to tender or tenderly. So we know that this character is a little bit more relaxed. It's not as excited as it was. And even though that's an indication maybe of the tempo for the whole entire thing, we can take that into account when we're trying to make the sound in our head that we want to create for this excerpt. The final excerpt also comes from the third trumpet part, and it's gonna mirror the part that we covered for the first trumpet part earlier in the video. The discussion is pretty much the same in terms of style and musical content. We wanna keep it nice and energetic. We wanna make sure the accents go where the accents go, and we're trying to manage the different dynamics so it doesn't all sound loud, but it has a lot of energy. The only changes of note are going to be the beginning, we have this continued three eighth note and a quarter note rhythm. And we gotta make sure that the first note is the note that has the emphasis and that it almost comes away from that note. And then here, four before 36, we're also trying to manage it gaining in intensity with the crescendo while still making sure that the first note has the emphasis. Then as it goes throughout, it's very similar to the first trumpet part until the end where we have this double tongued figure that I really try to bring out these 16th notes. I really wanna get those to pop out with the articulation so that it's nice and clear and really energetic. that's going to be all for this excerpt. I hope you enjoyed a little look into what I think about how to approach this excerpt and how to get some of the character out of it. If you end up using some of this in your practice sessions, let me know. I'd love to hear how it helped. I'm going to leave a link on the screen to another video that I think you'll definitely want to check out if you haven't seen it. And until then, we'll see you in the next video.